be picky for whom you work. Pick places where your immediate mentor defines their success by your success. So welcome, uh, Eddie. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to have you uh, with us today. You are uh, connecting uh, from Australia, a bit of distance between us, uh, but uh, great uh, to have you. Eddie, you are the Managing Director of Security and Innovation for, uh, for Asia Pac, and I should say you're a perpetual tech geek. And we'll, we'll find out what that means uh, when, uh, when you introduce yourself. So uh, we have had the pleasure to meet on and off uh, during your career, we had uh, different work together, so I had a very nice collaboration with you and a nice relationship uh, since then. So uh, thanks for being with us today and sharing a bit about your unusual uh, career. Uh, over to you. Thanks, Guy. Um, you called my career unusual. I hope that's in a good way. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, connecting from Melbourne, Australia now. Uh, I've had the uh, luck, I would say, the fortune of moving around the world, uh, doing what I love. As Guy mentioned, I'm the Managing Director for Security Innovations Asia Pacific Division now. And uh, my journey really started in India you know, and high school and everything, writing code in C, sometimes in basic. And then I got the uh, opportunity to do my bachelor's in many things uh, i mean not with multiple degrees but i you know i changed i jumped major so much yeah so i you know started my bachelor's degree in florida in the florida institute of technology where i really got exposed to some great teachers and some mentors and a great professor who had his own research team and uh, we were really just focused on functional testing at that time and security was not really on anybody's radar at that time it was not even an afterthought. It was an afterthought of an afterthought. And very few people were interested in security. But, you know, as a research team, we kind of felt that functional testing is great and all, but the next future is in security. So before I even graduated, we were working on very fundamental, very basic security tools. At that time, the World Wide Web, as you might imagine, was much more basic than it is today. And, uh, you know, from college, I joined Security Innovation as the company itself was an offshoot of our research group there. So I had the fortune of, you know, jumping into security very early in life. Believe it or not, I started out as a software developer uh, for Security Innovation. I don't know if you knew that about me. Either. No, I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and I had a great time. At that time, we were developing this product uh, for security fault injection for Windows applications. And it was written in C Sharp, and I loved uh, coding. And I did that for about a year. And uh, our company was also doing very basic penetration testing. I call it basic now, but at that time, it was cutting edge. Uh, penetration testing for web apps. And uh, once I got involved with that team, I absolutely loved it. The World Wide Web was full of vulnerabilities at that time. It was really like uh, shooting fish in a barrel, as they say. You know, sometimes you found vulnerabilities even when you were not looking for it. And uh, that happens, I guess, some places. But, uh, you know, that's how I really got, you know, security got a hold of me is when I started doing penetration testing. Uh, but again, uh, my company also used to do uh, instructor-led training. So if you had some kind of experience, you could go and deliver these lectures for some of our clients that were Fortune 100 companies. And uh, I went along with some senior people in the company. I accompanied them on these trips to California and you know other states in the US, just sitting and observing. Right? Like I was part of the class, uh, but then, you know, after a few sessions, I got the hang of it and they started letting me do half a day and then one full day. And then I was suddenly doing like five days in a row. 
there were certain companies that had like you know they, they had very specific requirements and i loved doing it i loved instructing not so much to you know feel like you know oh i'm the instructor or the teacher but they say that you learn when you teach and i found that to be so true because of the questions mainly because of the questions that came from the class because there are no dumb questions uh you just have to be able to explain things better i mean that's your job when you're there as an instructor if someone's not getting it it's you know it's kind of your failure that you've not been able to explain it so in order to better explain things to people you have to better understand things and uh, that was you know another step uh, in my professional development because of that later on like maybe 10 years later i even delivered an entire semester of lectures at a university in delhi once i had returned back to india but uh, yeah with security innovation i did a lot of pen testing work a lot of training work but after 7 years with them i kind of had this urge to come back to india uh, because i saw that there was a i felt that there was a lot of lot of new potential in asia uh, that had already been tapped in uh, the western world so i left security innovation came back to india founded my own firm called red fort infosec uh, with security innovation as my primary client i say primary but only client i came back started the company at that time it was just me i was still on the hunt looking for people uh, but at the same time i was still doing a little bit of pen testing course development for security innovation then i found some good people in india to work with you know uh, showed them the ropes uh, learned from them as well and uh, uh, soon after i had the uh, fortune of working with yogi uh, the sony project came along and uh, i got to meet you and your team and that was a great learning experience as well uh, you had a great team uh, back there and uh, the interesting thing with that project was uh, you guys knew what you wanted which is half the job sometimes you know customers don't really know what they want they want security and they know they want pen testing but uh, to what depth to the scope it, it was difficult but you guys knew exactly what you wanted and that made things much easier for us after 5 years of you know doing my own company uh, we were absorbed back into security innovation uh, and we were asked to build out the india team we were only uh, four people by then not big by any means and we were all engineers and in 2015 we became security innovation india now we are 32 people uh, across india pretty much everyone is remote uh, we have a very swanky nice office in pune Uh, but covid came along and we were all you know security innovations always been a very remote friendly company after covid nobody wanted to come back so we were like okay work from wherever you are you're most effective and the company globally is 170 people now and i oversee you know all aspects of our asia pacific operations you know be it recruiting uh finding good people in cyber security as most of the viewers might uh, know is very tough finding good people in cyber security is challenging and so i focus some of my time on that i focus my other than engineering i focus my energies on working with the sales and marketing team to ensure that you know we can find and deliver the best services and products to our customers in the pacific I also like working with our customer success and support uh, members because once you've got a customer you want to provide them what they need but also you know the customer success team needs to ensure that we really understand what they need right so I I like to work with the teams as well you know that's moving away a little bit from cyber security but I enjoy that kind of work right in cyber security now i you know uh, i don't do any more hands on testing or coding anymore sometimes i like to fire up an ide and write some code and feel good about myself but i don't get a chance to do that too much uh, these days i like to work with organizations to uh, define their 
security policies and processes. 20 years ago, so this month actually is 20 years of me being in cybersecurity. Super. Uh, but yeah, 20 years ago, if I thought I would like to do documentation, I would not have believed myself. So, but I like to do that now, right? I, I love working on policies and processes because they're so essential and so core to how an organization functions. And, uh, you know, I, I believe not enough attention is being paid there. You know, I like to uh, interpret the best practices and compliance requirements for customers because they can sure read a list of requirements, but to break it down, to explain to them how it applies to them. You know, I get a rush from that. I enjoy doing that. Lately, a lot of customers have been getting bombarded with these VSQs, vendor security questionnaires, uh, because supply chain has become very important in the last three, four years. Companies left and right have been getting these vendor security questionnaires and they're stumped. They don't know what to do with it. So I you know, like to walk them through it, tell them what's missing, tell them that, yeah, we can't say yes, we have to everything. We have to tell them when we are not doing something, they're not going to crucify you for it. They will understand that it's a weakness and you get time to work on it. Uh, other things I enjoy doing is, you know, uh, gap analysis for enterprises when it comes to cybersecurity. So I was doing all of this stuff when I, uh, I was still in Pune, uh, moved back and then I decided I need uh, to hop again, hop around the world again. So uh, this February, I moved to Melbourne and believe it or not, I'm actually back in college as well. On the side, I'm doing a master's degree in cybersecurity. And, uh, you know, the, the reason I'm doing it is because the institution that I picked, this university, their cybersecurity degree really focuses on the math aspect of cybersecurity, which is something that I've not really focused on. And, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I just finished my first semester. So we'll see where, where the journey goes forward. But that's my, that's my story uh, so far. Maybe uh, one or two questions uh, to you, uh, but uh, a bit, bit back to your, what you told us. Uh, you know, uh, two things. One is uh, how, you know, you must have seen uh, India change in this period of time, you know, from the early days when you left uh, to, to Florida, to uh, when you came back and, 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 and worked there, uh, how how I mean I have I have I mean I have not your experience, but I went to India for about ten years, so there has been so much evolution. It's not the same country anymore. So what what's your take on that? Uh, just briefly, I mean, there's a, a whole show we can do about that. But, uh. So uh, technology-wise, uh, by the time I was leaving, yes, uh, there were. Uh, software development export houses like really big companies already and uh, they were good right like uh, depends on how much you want to pay if you don't want to pay good you get the crappy developers you want to pay good you get the good developers right still true today uh, but most of our tech was focused on software development only that, that was my thing on it I didn't know too much I was happy in my own little world but every year when I visited India back from college, I found that the kinds of technologies that they were using uh, for development kept on supporting me. And uh, uh, eventually uh, I started noticing that people are not just doing software development anymore, or, you know, we had software testing houses. I didn't see cybersecurity for some time. Even in 2010, when I came back, Yes, there, I mean, cybersecurity was known. Uh, people knew that it's a hot field, but there weren't too many people who knew what they were doing. There were some though. And you know, that gave me a lot of confidence. That's why I felt that I could come back and find people. And cybersecurity, if we have to just talk about cybersecurity, I would say the change in India from 2010 till now, till 2023, that's where the huge leap is. When you go to a college uh, recruiting seminar these days uh, and you speak with people, what do you want to do? 
Most of them don't say, I want to do software development. They will give you 10 things they want to do, of which cybersecurity will be in the top two. Right? Everybody wants to get into security, which is a good thing, but it's also a challenge because when you are recruiting uh, and you need to interview people, everybody wants to do cybersecurity, but they may not have the natural inclination or the skill for it. So weeding out people is, you know, we have to uh, get creative and come up with methods to, uh, to save our own time as well. So let me put it to you this way, right? In 2010, 2010 to 2013, uh, we had to interview out of 150 people, we would hire one, okay? And not, not you know, I mean, we caught on pretty quick. We didn't interview everyone. We used to give them a uh, uh, hack in the box kind of a thing, uh, custom uh, security innovations uh, platform that here, if you can find these many bugs, then we'll talk to you, right? Uh, but from like 150 hiring one, uh, now people uh, who even apply out of 10, we can hire one. It's clearly a country on the move, so uh, I'm sure uh, you know. Once you go back from Melbourne to India from time to time, you'll you'll see even more changes. Uh, so thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. Uh, I have uh, one more, two more questions, two before we finish. One is, uh, you know, you have had a long experience and career, and what what is there anything, any wisdom you would like to share with your peers? What did you sure. learn, which uh, you didn't know initially, which you say, well, okay, here is something, you know, I recommend to anybody who is um, my peer as in, in terms of, you know, uh, who, how to operate, what to do, uh, you know, how to organize. So I've played like on both sides of the board where, you know, I could be on the blue team or the red team, you know, as a pen testing now. So I'll, I'll speak to both sides because I think it's important. Uh, that you know, if you're on the product development or the blue team, no matter what size your company is, you could be like a five-person startup, or you could be like a 50% company, 200, 2000, have documentation, please, for your policies and procedures. And I mentioned this a little earlier, like how much I love doing it, but it's important to have it. You don't want to do it yourself. There are plenty of people who can do it for you. And there are very good templates. Uh, when it comes to cybersecurity templates for policies and procedures, you should definitely leverage them. Most of the times, to get a start, take the template, try and modify it yourself, have something. Because even till now, uh, when I'm dealing with, uh, let's say, smaller companies, 200, 300 people strong, they have no documentation. They, they fly by, you know, uh, via, they, take it as it comes, and uh, there is no uh, system. So if you're on that, please have some documentation. Um, also, it's, it's, it seems obvious, but do some kind of a risk assessment for your enterprise. Because, you know, gone are the days when we could say, oh, I have a firewall, or, you know, we have these sure. perimeter defenses and we're gonna be safe. You can't assume that. And even if you have like a lot of other defense in depth, software defenses, you can't assume uh, what the risk to your enterprise is. Uh, perform a risk assessment. It's not hard. Uh, again, there are many templates. Uh, one that I love recommending to people is uh, CIS RAM, the CIS risk assessment methodology. It's got different implementation groups depending on the, the size of the company. And you can use that to get started. Like, you know, within a week, you would have made good progress. And uh, do this, you know, risk assessment for your entire enterprise, including infrastructure, DevOps, internal communications, you know, how, how does your email system work? Do you have a password manager? Everything. It's not hard. Uh, don't think that, you know, I need to finish it within a week or a month could take you a year. That's fine, but get started. That, that, that's number one. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I mean, I, I can only agree with two points. On, on the first one, I remember when 
I was a global CISO at the Sony Electronics out of Japan. I think we were trying to document because we had so many entities globally. I think we, we, we had uh, our internet had about 10,000 pages, but we still always felt that there's so much missing uh, uh, and so yeah. forth. So documentation, especially you know, uh, in security where you may, have, you may be having to develop future things or you have an incident or anything, Without documentation, you know, it's almost impossible to manage. But uh, maybe my last question today is uh, for you is, you know, we talk about your peers, but you, know, uh, you mentioned a while the, about the recruiting situation in India. What, you know, what is, you know, you may have a lot of young people, hopefully more and more who go into security, who may think mm-hmm. about going to security, who may be in the early stages of education or even the career. Uh, and you know, security has become very wild, white field nowadays. Yeah. So, uh, is there any advice you would give them uh, to to a little bit orient them in, in their career? Sure. Uh, you know, the first thing that jumps out to me is because it helped me in my entire journey so far is work under leaders uh, who are good mentors as well. Right. So your immediate manager, mentor, boss, whatever, uh, should be a be picky, right? Like the, I guess the tip is to be picky for whom you work. Uh, pick places where your immediate mentor defines their success by your success. Right? They need to be invested in your success. You will not have all the answers at all times and. Uh, it should not be web searches or your peers who are uh, always advising you. So if you have a mentor like that, it can really be helpful. The second thing is, I feel like a lot of the young people are starting with uh, pen testing or bug bounty hunting, which is great, but people are just getting stuck there, right? Like cybersecurity is a huge field. Uh, One thing I would say, to any young people watching this, is search for the term cybersecurity domain map. Just search for it. There are many people who have created these maps, uh, which map out the entire cybersecurity domain graphically, and try to, you know, uh, if not move around, try to add to your capability in these different subdomains every two years, if not every year. Don't get stuck one place in cybersecurity. It's huge. I think we can and, add that in uh, the in the show notes uh, exactly, so people don't have to search for it. Yeah, I yeah, think that's uh, a yeah, great, be, uh, great, great advice. Yeah. So uh, you know, we, I think we come we have come at the end uh, of this. So I, I really appreciate uh, Eddie for uh, having taken the time to to uh, explain uh, your journey uh, to us. It's 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 quite inspiring, and obviously in uh, future shows uh, we will look into. Uh, uh, both application security basics, but also the more advanced mm-hmm. topics. So I should say, stay tuned to this channel uh, for more to come. Uh, looking forward already uh, to our next uh, discussion. And again, uh, thank you so much for having uh, shared pleasure, uh, your experience. Total pleasure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.